Welcome to another Tuesday Talk with Ruby Reese. We set up this series because we meet so many brilliant, talented people in the Irish dog community on our travels around at different events up and down the country. And we learn something from each and every one of them. So we decided to set this up to speak with people about topics that they're really passionate about. So this evening, I'll be joined by the amazing Susan Walsh and for a very brief moment I'll also be joined by Ruby of Ruby Reese um, because tonight's topic is going to be all about French Bulldogs and as soon as she is our very own French Bulldog and dog boss at Ruby Reese we said I'd try and make her sit on my lap even though it's actually snoozy time after her dinner so uh, we'll see how long she lasts here. She probably wants to go off into her bed and have a snooze. Um, just about a little bit about the format. So it's designed to be chatty and conversational, which means that we will um, you know, be making rash generalizations sometimes just to keep the conversation going. And we um, don't necessarily have advice for your specific dog or situation. Um, so if you do have any concerns about your dog or your, um, your dog or your situation, then it's, um, it's worth speaking to a certified professional about. I am just trying to see. Joining is, is working here for me. So give us one second while Instagram is uh, heating up for us. Ruby and very much uh, Frenchy style is is uh, getting a little bit impatient, but that's totally fine as well. So, I think we might be ready to roll. Susie, hi, happy Tuesday evening, and welcome to the Tuesday Talk. Thank you so. Much much for having me no thank you for joining us uh ruby's here very very briefly just to show the world what a friend she looks like but she's also getting impatient so i'm going to put her down while i ask you to kindly introduce yourself to the audience please hi everyone well firstly i have to apologize i am um, got stuck in an emergency consultation as with dogs because life is crazy with dogs so i didn't make it to my destination so i'm in my car so apologies first for that um, I'm Susie, my name is Susie. I've been working professionally with dogs for about 17 years now. I've never done anything else. I've always known I want to work with dogs and I've always worked toward that goal and I absolutely love what I do. Um, I find myself the luckiest person in the world who gets to work and meet so many nice dogs, um, and especially Frenchies. Uh, I love Frenchies. I work a lot with Frenchies and they're, they're a wonderful little breed of dogs. Uh, so much personality and so much a character going on that I'm just delighted to have whole talk just speaking about how great they are exactly i couldn't agree with you more and not to worry about being in the car and things changing like you say we all work in the dog community we know that things change and things are unpredictable and that's totally fine as well um so just as an introduction to myself for anyone that doesn't know me um i'm killian from ruby reese we set up ruby reese because of our Frenchie Ruby that you just saw. Um, she has sensitive skin, sensitive tummy, you name it, she's got it. So we've uh, developed a range of products that are suitable for dogs with sensitivities, as well as, of course, every other dog as well, uh, but with sensitivities in mind. So um, without further ado, I think let's start talking about Frenchies and those amazing characters. What would you say, as soon as you work, I, I can only speak on behalf of, of Ruby and our experience with her and how we, you know, see her characteristics, but you've obviously got a lot of experience working with multiple different Frenchies. So right across the breed, and again, we do make generalizations, of course, but um, 
you know, what what makes them special? What and what stands out about them in comparison to other dogs? It was really funny today because I was thinking of this this afternoon, knowing I was going to talk, and I was like, how do I describe a Frenchie in a concise way? And I came to the conclusion that I said a Frenchie is like your ride or die friend. Your friend, your Frenchie is like ask no questions they're your pal and no matter what's going on they're in you want to bury a dead body they go what car do you want to drive you know they're the dog that's just in with you no matter what they're such a brave little dog they've got so much personality condensed into this little solid little beautiful looking squishy block and they're great they're I love working with them because they're super smart they're super intelligent I love them when they're problem solving. I love when they, you know, they figure something out. And I love how courageous they are. So the hard thing about them when you're working with them, in general speaking, they generally, I call them the bowling ball with legs. Mm -hmm. So they generally go all in. So when you have a problem, they're right in it. They don't, they're not a dog that runs from fear a lot of, or runs from something scary. They go towards the problem, which can lead to complications, you know. So, you know, obviously when I work with a Frenchie and they see two dogs arguing in the park, the Frenchie wants to go over and see what's going on and maybe police the scenario and see how they can aid or, or or get involved in the scenario they're not a dog that shies away from those kind of things which makes them a really good character uh to live with i assume yeah Absolutely. so i can and i can totally um you know register that registered so much with me because ruby would she'd, she'd see two german shepherds in, in the park and she'd she'd run in between them be like what's going on here i'm the referee do you want to talk about this it's like ruby you're about a third of their size or less a quarter of their size um so yeah they definitely are small dogs with uh, that think they're an awful lot bigger than they are um they're very and, fearless uh, yeah they're they're yeah they're obviously i do obviously see frenchies who have fear issues but generally speaking on a whole they're you know and they're the dog that kind of welcomes you but not just with a hello with a I want to climb and just be part of your being right now and I want to give you all of the love and I think with they're a dog that once you're in you're in you're you're the best buddy you're there on their list of people that they love and adore you know um they're so fun and and you mentioned uh, a lot about strength as well. So I guess this comes from them being, you know, one of the bully breeds. Um, how how do you see, you know, them in comparison to other, or you know, do they have a lot of similarities with other bullies? I'm talking about, you know, the Staffies, the American bullies. Um, do they do do you see similarities with with their characteristics and and other bully breeds as well? Yeah. That's a really good question so I do in the fact that they're all you know they're very generally friendly dogs so they generally go in all out you know I can see characteristics of you know Staffy where they're really excited and uh, affectionate kind of dogs and that you know that bravery as well you know obviously they come from generally UK bulldogs and they were mixed when they came when they originated in France with ratters over there so you can really see their history they haven't removed they haven't moved far from them from 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 there at all and so i there's definitely comparisons but they they are they do love their creature comforts they love their they love you know obviously being on a lap or a sofa they're they're, they're either they're like i suppose a staffy they're either on or they're off there's no middle there's no yeah. necessarily calm scenario it's either i'm all in or i'm out you know yeah so, and, yeah. and I suppose with this, with this attitude, with the uh, all poker chips in, they can come across as a little bit stubborn at times as well, because like you say, it's either in or out for them. So does, do you, number one, do you think stubbornness is, is something that, uh, that you see in a lot of Frenchies? And number two, does this have an impact on how you train a Frenchie? So stubbornness is not a characteristic of dogs anyway, and full stop. In order to be stubborn, you have to be, have conflict against, somebody's will you have to have an in-depth emotional I suppose range which dogs don't have so dogs wake up in the morning and Ruby wakes up in the morning going how can I make this day the best day can be for Ruby and that's what she the, what they work on and that's what they, they work they see what works for them what doesn't work for them what's advantageous to them what's not and that's the kind of way they live their life they look, they don't, there's no animal on this planet that was born to be compliant to a human being. They're a species onto their own right. They like to make choices in their life. And if you're not a good choice for them on what you want them to do, they go, well, that's not a good choice for me. The same as a human might. 
Um, so it's not really stubbornness. We call it stubbornness at a whole, but dogs are generally aren't stubborn um, at all. Actually, and dogs are very, very biddable animals. So, when it, and that's probably why they fall into the category of they get themselves in trouble because often, you know, if they decide they want to go and chase that squirrel, that looks more fun than following you. We call them naughty and bad and stubborn and all these negative things when actually, in fact, they're just in it for the fun and they're only really thinking about themselves. And, yeah. you know, okay. and, and, and um, I suppose maybe this is from something that we were told long ago, but we have the belief that Ruby reacts an awful lot better to positive reinforcement, i.e. us convincing her that something is a good idea for her to want to do, as opposed to, um, you know, punishing her, giving out to her. I think she she then gets well, what I would call sulky, but again, maybe that's uh, taking it through a human's emotional eyes. But um, how, how do you feel about that? Are there... No, I wouldn't disagree with you. And they are a fairly sensitive breed. They are a very sensitive breed and they don't like conflict. They don't like to be shouted at. They don't respond well to any kind of aggression or any kind of, you know, uh, you know, forceful kind of behavior so dogs are much much better if you convince them that what you want them to do is the great thing to do and then you get a lot more bang for your buck by doing that by you know positive reinforcement telling them when they've got a good job rewarding them for it encouraging them so ruby thinks that your idea what you want her to be as which is well behaved is the best way to be and yeah. because it's advantageous for her and that's the way you're going to win your dog over at the end of the day it's really funny the way we think about dogs because at the end of the day you get a dog to be your pal and be your friend and that's the way you should treat them just like a friend just yeah. like a family member just like you know part of your community not this subservient four-legged creature that must do what you say at all times that's no fun awesome. Definitely. A great example I use, you often see these um, Instagram videos or these TikTok videos where you have somebody who looks like a very impressive dog trainer. And what they're doing is they're saying heel to their dogs and their dogs are staying awfully beside them at all times. And then they say go free for it to their dogs and they, their dogs run away from them. And then they say heel and the dog comes back and it looks like, you, wow, this is great training and you have high level compliance and you can control your dogs coming to and from you and it looks on the on the surface as being really impressive but actually if you look at the dogs they often look quite miserable and what I'll say to people is actually in fact when I work with dogs and I work with my dogs when I tell my dogs when my dogs are with me they want to be with me if I tell them to go free they're still with me they don't want to leave me because I'm nice and I'm good fun they don't, you know, I always worry about a dog where someone says heel and stay beside me and then go free. And the dog wants to be as far away from the person that they can possibly be. That's not a dog that enjoys your company. You know, we want to convince our dogs that actually we're great. You know, don't choose the squirrel because it's way more fun. The party is over here. And it's not really hard to do that with an animal that's so naturally um, affectionate towards people. They have a, an amazing relationship with human beings that no other species on the planet has. They absolutely do. And I think I think any Frenchie owner will will find it very, very easy to resonate that they become part of the family extremely quickly. Um, I think they bond with you so much that they know how you tick as well. And I don't know whether whether uh, you're tra trying to train them or they're trying to train you a lot of the time. Uh, what you want to me. What you want to do is convince them, let them think that they're training you, but actually you're training them. That's the way I do. That's the way I work. That's um, actually a them, brilliant trick for us. Yeah. A bit of reverse psychology. Yeah. Oh, look what I've done. I've made Susie give me treats. I'm going to do that again. Look what I've made her do now. And what I made her do now. But it's actually a reverse of what I actually want them to do anyway. And being such great family dogs, and I know you mentioned uh, a little bit about their history already, you know, originating from, from England at some point, I think in the 19th century, becoming very popular in Paris. Um, I, I guess it, one of the major things of their popularity is, you know, of course, because of this friendliness and, um, you know, best body kind of feeling from, from a Frenchie, but also, um, are they great in cities? Are they good at city life? Do they... they necessarily need lots of space um, are these requirements that could have led to some of their popularity in France giving them then the name French Bulldog yeah because they're quite a compact dog you know they're quite they don't take up a lot of space 
They're very attractive looking dogs. They've got those cute little rounded ears. And they don't, they adapt really well because they quite like activity. Like most Frenchies, when you take them out, they love just looking at the world. They're a little bit of a nosy parker. They're a little bit busy bodies. They want to know and look at everything. And a city great life is great for that because there's so much going on. So there's so much for them to look at and so much for them to observe. And they kind of relish in that because there's always someone to say hello to them. There's always something to be looking at what's going on. And I don't really, you never really picture them in a rural environment in the field because actually, in fact, they're, they're very much the observer who likes to go out and see what's going on with the world. And so they do, and they adapt well to apartment living and they adapt well to, you know, they do need, they do like going out and about. They like exercise, but they also like mental stimulation. They're quite happy to go out a lot of the time as an adult to go and sit off in a cafe while you have a cup of coffee and, and watch the world go by equally as much as they like to go for a walk. They're quite adaptable uh, little dogs. Absolutely. And I think I think you hit the nail in the head. Ruby really likes her zoomies in a big open field, but that lasts for exactly five minutes and then it's over and done with. Um, whereas she will sit at, at you know, our fair stand, for example, at, at any event up and down the country and say hello to, to every single dog and human that passes and uh, relishes in all the attention. So I think I think you're totally right. She she loves being nosy, loves uh, the attention from from people and beings. Um, so I think I think you're totally right there. And um, you mentioned things like the, like the brain work. So obviously they, they don't need miles and miles of walks a day, but do you think that mental stimulation, and I suppose that plays to their intelligence as well, um, do you recommend a lot of sniffing games or enrichment and things like that? Is this something? Yeah, what I find works best are Frenchies. Yeah, they like all of those things, but problem solving. They love to solve a problem. They love to work with people because they're a very people orientated dog and they love to, you know, pro what, I, what I call problem solve, figure out what's going on and how they can repeat the good thing that happens. Like a lot of the time when I'm working with them, I leave it a lot up to what I reward is the Frenchie for good choices. So if a Frenchie decides to go and lie down, I immediately give them a treat. And then they go lie down and put their head down. I need to give them a treat. So I will start to reward for behavior they're offering themselves. And so they start to go, oh, look what I've figured out. And that's, that in itself is really rewarding for a dog. Yeah, they love uh, sniffing games. Absolutely. They're a great little dog for, um, you know, using puzzles and any kind of enrichment. But I do find they love any kind of interaction. I do find that when I work with a Frenchie, those Frenchies that do better are the ones that get that, not only the exercise, not only the in mental enrichment, but that engagement with their people where they're challenged on an intelligent level to figure things out. But along, they because they love working with people, they love you to be part of the action, you know, that we're all involved in the game or the activity that we're doing right now. Absolutely. And we see that as well with, with Ruby. You know, she, she presents us with a toy and expects the tug of war is going to be the, the aim of the game right now, regardless of whether we're working or whatever we're doing. So I can get that she wants uh, she wants kind of a community type of activity as opposed to go off and solve something herself. Um, so I can definitely see that. And um, so Talking about Frenchies and other dogs in the household, um, talking about other breeds, do they get on well with other breeds? And also maybe um, touching on multi-Frenchie households, because I certainly know people in real life and also on Instagram that have two, three, four Frenchies in a house. Um, is this a great idea? Is it better to, to mix and match with, with other breeds? Um, what are your thoughts on, on mixing Frenchies with other dogs? It depends on the personality. I definitely know some people. I definitely think Frenchies enjoy dog dog company as well. They're a very social dog. I generally think they're they work quite well with sometimes a pug or an English bulldog, which is a little bit calmer a lot of the time or a little bit mellower, just because Frenchies can be quite explosively excited and sometimes yeah. Frenchies can be a lot but um oft, often uh, you know if you have different age group frenchies they work quite well together but they kind of work a lot with a lot of breeds when you're looking for a breed to match with your frenchie or maybe if a frenchie is suitable for your dog they do like the rough and tumble so they're not a, they do like the kind of the tug of war the rough and tumble the playing the flying around so a more delicate dog maybe you know wouldn't like i you know I have seen them together and they've worked out well, but maybe not a Maltese or a delicate, more delicate dog that doesn't like that high level impact energy and engagement. Yeah, yeah. you know. 
So I've seen them work well with boxers and, you know, Mastiff's Labs. You know, they generally like, obviously, other Frenchies. I generally see them better working or maybe it's just because I see more of them working with the Pugs or the English Bulldogs or the Staffies or those kind of, you know, but doesn't mean they don't, you know, I've also you know, have a great Frenchie who lives really well with the Cavalier, which okay. wouldn't seem like the most obvious choice, you know. Um, but yeah, it really just depends on the dog. But why wouldn't you have two Frenchies? Why, oh, why is that one? Why <laughs> Well, I, I, I think that is the, end, the conclusion that a lot of people come to. And it's funny that you mentioned the Russian, uh, the rough and tumble, because, you know, we out and about, we, we meet a lot of people with, say, a, a medium sized dog that has like a lab or something. And the owner is always like, oh, be careful now of the little dog, Benny. You know, and it's like you better call <laughs> your, your, your quiet, placid little Labrador to, <laughs> to, to watch out because uh, Ruby definitely loves rough and tumble, tug of war. You know, you wouldn't think of it when she sits down like a little princess, but uh, it definitely, uh, once, once the energy ups, it's, uh, it's a different story. And um, we mentioned it quite a bit about, so that's their, that's their high energy time. We mentioned as well that they do like the human interaction and the cuddles and, you know, lying around the sofa. You hear also terms like shadow dogs and Velcro dogs. Um, now, Frenchies, I suppose, were bred as lap dogs, so they're, they're kind of fulfilling their purpose in that sense. But do you see that shining through um, in, in a lot of the Frenchies? Do they follow their owners and want to be with them 24-7 yeah. regardless? And is it problematic? Actually, it's really good, a really good question. I They do like some, I think they're quite nosy dogs, so they like to know what's going on. And if obviously if there's someone at the door, if there's someone going somewhere, are they, is anything in it for them? Are they going to, you know, is this another opportunity for engagement for me? But I don't see them a huge amount for the likes of separation anxiety or isolation anxiety. Actually, I'd, have, I'd struggle now to think of a dog off the top of my head I'd have to have a good thing I'm sure I have worked with them but I don't see them a huge amount for that so they're quite good in that regard they do like to be involved they do absolutely like to go everywhere where you where you are at all times but I, I do find that they do quite well for little bits on their own once they have had the mental stimulation once they have had their exercise and their outlet they're quite happy as well to chill out and relax and not necessarily follow you everywhere and every necessarily get too de de too upset about it yeah yeah exactly and i i think i think we can see that as well ruby likes to be in the same room as one human at least at any one time but um she's totally okay with being left alone for a while as well i think sometimes she's delighted with the peace and quiet but uh, often she just likes to be in the room maybe in, in her bed just to sleep uh, while, while we're working away um so that's absolutely fine as well I, I wouldn't see it as a problem although she does like to have access to the whole house and and follow people throughout um and i suppose we have to talk about some of their other problems as well like we can't we can't get away from the fact that they have um or many of them have breathing problems um you know they are kind of a what's often termed as, as flat-faced uh, dogs, you know. Um, do you see a lot of dogs with problems? Is is it a breed that we should be avoiding specifically because of that? It's a um, really, that I really, it's, um, part of me gets really upset when I think of it because a lot of the time, obviously a few countries have gone down the route of potentially banning some breeds because of health concerns. And it's some of these breeds have got such wonderful personalities that it's hard to think of them not being around as a breed because it's never really when I work I suppose the best way I can explain it is when I work with a Frenchie and I do work with Frenchies a lot I do have a, a preference for the breed and anytime I'm working with a Frenchie that's labeled aggressive or that has an aggressive issue nine times out of ten it's a medical issue nine times out of ten and they're in some kind of discomfort that's just gone over the point because they're quite stoic little dogs in terms of they're quite tolerant of pain and discomfort as a breed and so they don't generally show it until they're actually quite severe and that often can be I see a lot of them with luxating patella which is a kneecap problem hip dysplasia problems with their spine from the compression less so problems of breathing I've seen know a lot of dogs have surgery but less so I would get behavior problems from breathing more so I'd be worried about the dog passing out or that kind of thing sure. um, but from a from a discomfort point of view you know I work with a lot of dogs who have gait, gait issues which is how they walk and that's actually causing 
or or sometimes underbite issues that that's sometimes causing their no it's always you know I would see a couple of Frenchies a week and most often or not if I see a a Frenchie with an aggression problem it's a pain problem it's not a behavioral it's not an innate Mm -hmm. psychological deep-rooted mean evil streak it's because the dog is actually a lot in discomfort and that can sometimes be hard to diagnose because they do go to vets and they like, they're very tactile dogs. So often they go, yay, I'm at the vet. I'm going to get a snuggle. And you don't often see that they're not necessarily yelping in pain. It takes a, a Frenchie a lot to yelp in pain or discomfort. So often we have to take video footage of them doing different movements to see, oh yeah, here's where it's gone wrong. And here's where this is the problem so that I can present to a vet and go, well, actually, this is what we're seeing outside of the clinic. Um, there's something going on with this dog and we have to find out what it is and can we treat it and how can we manage it? Because it, it, it's, it's really unfortunate, you know, and that's got to do with the breeding and the health and that kind of thing. So I suppose I, do, I wouldn't like to see them gone as a breed, but I do, I do have concerns about their health in general. Yeah, yeah. I, tend, I tend to agree with you. And I think there's, there's kind of been, I believe about three decades of discussion about improving the the overall health of that of the specific breed, and not a whole lot of success has been had. So it's it's really really unfortunate. And you know, as a as a Frenchie owner and Frenchie lover, it's it's very very difficult. But again, um, we meet a lot of, of Frenchies with issues, including our very own Frenchie that has skin problems, luxating patella. Um, really sensitive tummy, lots of allergies. So, um, it, you know, it's um, it's definitely people, something. People forget that actually, which is a really good point you've just made, that actually skin allergies and skin irritation can be incredibly infuriating and actually cause your dog to snap or give out or to growl because actually they get really hot. You know, if you're not feeling well, dogs are the same. If your tummy is not well, if your skin is inflamed, if you're itching, if you've got anything like that, that also makes you upset, overtired, cranky, all of those things. And and they tolerate a lot. The hard thing with Frenchies, I do think they find that they will go and go until they can't take it anymore. And then they tend to explode because they're they can't talk, they can't tell us. And and that's the hard thing because dogs can't tell us when they're in pain. And it's the biggest problem that I have in my industry because I see it all of the time. All of the time, it's always, I walk into a home and I go, I can see it immediately. I go, I know by the behavior, I know this dog is just in discomfort. What discomfort is this dog in? How can we fix it? You know, and a lot of my, um, a lot of my cases are, you know, pain management cases or discovery from that point of view, which is sad. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and you know, uh, we can totally identify with it. I always say that, you know, once the, the kind of overall immune system uh, is, is kind of out of flux then everything starts going wrong I mean when we were trying to figure out Ruby's allergies her um she was started getting ear infections um you know way too much yeast growing in her ears paws biting the paws scratching her tummy then she'd get wounds you know it just it, one thing leads to another and once once you start to to remove all of those irritants and start to figure out what's what's really going on and remove all the problems she was just she was a different dog really healthy really happy you know um so that I can totally you could imagine if you weren't the home that you were and you maybe weren't as aware and maybe you were in a home and she was in a home with maybe three or four children or people at her all the time or another dog you could imagine how irritable and upset she might get in that scenario when you're not aware of it and then we you know dogs have it a really hard I you know I always think they have it a hard, harder than most species because we have such high expectations of them and their tolerance for discomfort where you know you'd never you never bring your cat to the vet and say this is an aggressive cat I wanted to, this cat put to sleep you know I, I, I have heard it has happened but you very rarely or this hamster has bitten me I'm going to put it to sleep um, but for dogs we expect them to kind of tolerate all and everything and always do it with a smile on their face when it's really that's a really unrealistic expectation to have from anyone and anything that's a very good point and I never thought of the comparison between like with cats and with with rabbits in the past mm-hmm. but yeah it, uh, it definitely makes a whole lot of sense when you we, say it. We, we tend to blame ourselves if the cat bit us the cat scratched us or the horse kicked us or you know we tend to you know blame ourselves oh we shouldn't have done that um, or we shouldn't have interacted or we shouldn't have pushed that button but with dogs we immediately go to bad dog we never go oh maybe I shouldn't have done that maybe she's not feeling well or maybe they're this they're that and the other we tend to just go bad dog 
you know, and point all the blame on the animal that has the intelligent capacity of a three-year-old child, which is really, really, you know, it's unfair. Exactly. No, I, I totally understand that. And I suppose, um, I know we need to, to wrap up shortly because I know you've got other things going on this evening. Um, but for maybe, let's let's look at two aspects before we go. So one for um, current Frenchie owners, what's the best takeaway? And also maybe we can delve a little bit quickly into people um, considering a Frenchie. I suppose let's start with them. Um, I'm guessing you're going to, tell me as soon as we've we've said so many good things about them they're good with kids good with other dogs good in city landscapes um you know are, is, is there any any reason to for people to not consider a Frenchie or it's it's really the health concerns obviously from and from a financial point of view they do cost a lot when you have the, any of those health concerns you do need a really really good dedicated breeder who's interested in the health who's interested in the temperament who's done as much health test as they possibly can so they're, they're breeding they're not breeding inappropriate animals who's you know you know you need all that from the beginning you need a good team of people around you you need to be socializing your friends you need to be really well socialized from a young age and, you know, you also need to have an awareness of dogs. I think anyone who should be getting a dog should be aware of, you know, obviously, ideally speak to a professional before you choose a dog, get them involved with you picking a dog and where they're, you're getting it from. And then, the, you know, the starting point of that, that dog's life and how you can, you know, learn a bit of dog body language. It's there, it's on the internet, it's basic. And it lets you know, oh, my dog might not be well, or look, my dog is a little bit stressed. And it prevents all of those problems from escalating to the point where there's no return or you have to rehome your dog or worst case scenario, all those kind of things. So, but it's, yeah, it's really, really important at, at the starting point that if you're going to go down the road of getting a Frenchie that you can, we know there's health concerns. We know, you know, obviously insurance is a must. We know that they might need a specialized diet. How can we do that from the get go and make sure that we get the, the healthiest because there are healthy Frenchies out there. I know healthy Frenchies, and I'm not really concerned about them from a, a physical point of view. But you need to, you know, go down there because otherwise it can be heartbreaking for the dog. It's unfair on the dog to be promoting, you know, just breeding these dogs that are really just unwell for the whole of their life. You know, mm-hmm. it's unkind. And it's also incredibly stressful and upsetting for you if you do end up with a dog that you know, is in bad health because a lot of the time there's not permanent solutions for these problems and these difficulties that they're having. And it's a lot of management. So a lot of pain management. And you really don't want to be caring for a dog that's in long term pain because there's an ethical concern for that as well. Absolutely. So it's, it's worthwhile as a French owner just watching out for the signs of, of the typical things. Like, like you said, not every Frenchie is unhealthy. Not every Frenchie has all of those health problems. For example, Ruby is very, very good breathing. Um, so, yeah. you know, that, that's, that's something at least. Uh, and, and, and everything else we can manage. I mean, with her, it's, it's just sorting out her diet, basically. Um, uh, is, is a good way. So anyway, for current Frenchies, I think what I've learned from you this evening is that we should be a bit kinder to our Frenchies. You know, take them, when, when we want them to do something, take them by the hand and say, this is going to be great crack. Let's let's do it together. Um, what other little tidbits can you give us before, uh, before you... Well, just what you said there is my biggest thing that I say to people is you can never go wrong with being kind. You can't spoil a dog into a behaviour problem. It's not possible. You can't love your dog enough that they get a behavior problem. It's not possible. From a psychological point of view, it is not possible to spoil a human or a dog or any other animal or to love them enough that they're going to get a behavior problem. That's a myth and a misconception. So love your dog. Be kind to your dog. You'll never regret being kind to a living sentient being ever. What you might regret is being unkind, which then has high risk and high high consequences. And always remember, you know your dog best. If your dog is all of a sudden growled at you and their three-year-old dog, I can promise you that's not just a weird behavior problem that's manifested in your dog's decided to get up in the morning and go, I don't like you anymore. There's a problem behind that. So you know your dog more better than any vet, any behaviorist, because you spend so much time with your dog. So analyze your dog's behavior. Have a look at them. See what's changed, what could be causing a problem without panic and kind of looking at it with a kind of an open eye that this isn't my dog today. My dog is not normally like this. You know, and get to know your dog, get to know their body language, get to know their likes and their dislikes and be their friend first and foremost. You know, like you just said, 
get them to realize that you are the best, most funnest person that's possibly going to be alive. And also that they trust you. You know, you can't instill, you can't have those two things. You can't have a dog who's your friend and that trusts you that's also scared of you. It doesn't work that way. So you need to have a dog that's confident that you're going to, you know, look after them and mind them and they don't have to worry about anything because those are the dogs that are going to run to you when they're scared and check in with you when they don't know what decision to make. They're going to be your pal and they're going to be the confident, comfortable, happy, content, love a content dog. You know, it's just magic. Absolutely. Thank you so, so, so much for taking the time out of your evening to come on and talk all things friendly with, with me. It's been absolutely brilliant. Um, appreciate it so much. And guys, if you're watching it now and you're interested in finding a bit more about Susie Walsh, check out her Instagram page, um, dogbehavior.ie. If you're not following us already, we're um, at Ruby Reese Official. I am now off to give Ruby some treats and some well-deserved hugs. Thank you once again. And I really, really appreciate, appreciate everything. Thank you again. And apologies for the background. There's enough of my life with dogs. It's chaotic and crazy and the traffic of Dublin. <laughs> so Brilliant. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm off to cuddle five puppies right now because Tuesday night is my puppy class and it's my favourite time of the week. Thank you very much. Really, really appreciate it. Enjoy your puppy cuddles. Thank you. Bye. Bye.